In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front caliper on this Mazda 6. Let's get started. Use your 21 millimeter socket to remove all five of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Use a 12 millimeter to crack the banjo bolt free. Wrench your socket. Once it's free, snug it up just so brake fluid doesn't leak, but at least this will be a lot easier to remove once the caliper is off. Speaking of, use a 17 millimeter socket, take these two bolts out, and then we can remove the caliper and bracket assembly right off the knuckle. Take this off, support the caliper, pull it off of the rotor. I'm going to set it up here so that it doesn't pull on the brake hose. Now we have the caliper bracket on a workbench and we're going to prep it for installation and that basically just means greasing everything up. I'm going to start with the slider pins, pull these out and I personally like to add extra grease to them. What I'm using is silicone paste, high temperature brake rated silicone paste so that it can well, basically not melt as the brakes heat up. Coat the pins in a thin layer of it. And then what I like to do is take some extra, put it inside the boot. This is going to act as a reserve of grease as the brakes operate and wear over time. Stick the pin back in here, press it. And as you can see, there's air trapped in there. To get that out, press on the pin, squeeze on the boot. And usually that'll allow you to get all the air out. There we go. A bit of excess grease comes out as well. A little bit of squish is normal, but if it's ballooned out or pushed out, that's not good. At this point, do the same to the other one. And I like to do them one at a time because you'll notice that one had a uh, rubber bushing here, a rubber sleeve. This one does not. It's just a straight, flat, machined pin. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. Add some grease to the inside of the boot and a little bit on the slider pin. Get this back in here, squeeze out any excess air or grease, wipe it off, and then flip it over. We're going to add a thin layer of grease right here where the anti-rattle clips sit. You don't want to put a lot. If you do put too much, it'll actually squish out and it can get in the center here where the rotor rides. Then your rotor has grease on it and that's something you want to avoid. So just a thin layer on all of the machine surfaces. Once you've done that, you can take your anti-rattle clips and make sure you have the right side. As you can see, it takes a little bit of guessing. And once you find the right side, you should be able to just press it straight down. If you don't have it perfectly lined up, it won't go down. There we go. It should be flat, flush with the mounting point. There we go. Flip it over, do the same on the other side. All right, all four are in. Let's mount the caliper bracket. Install the caliper bracket, put in the two bolts. Snug these up. Eighty foot pounds is the torque for both of these.
remove the old pads from the caliper or from the old caliper. There we go. Set this back up here. And we're going to put both pads will have a wear indicator. We're going to put the pad with the wear indicator on the top on the inner part of the caliper bracket. Slide it in at an angle and make sure it goes in. Sometimes these spring clips are a little tough to overcome. There we go. And then the other pad, which if it were here would have the wear indicator on the bottom. You want it also on the top, but on the outside. Same way, slide it in at an angle, clip them both in. Now grab your caliper, line it up, and thread on the slider pin retainer bolts. There we go. These are easy to thread in, so I'm just going to go all the way by hand. The torque on these is 25 foot-pounds. Remove the new banjo bolt from the new caliper. It should come with two brand new copper washers. Get both of those off of here. Leave one on the bolt. Break free the banjo bolt again and remove it all the way. Brake fluid will come out. Let that old caliper drain. Remove the banjo bolt as well as the two used copper washers. Discard that. Inspect the hose. It looks like it's in great condition. Stick the new banjo bolt through with that washer on the other side. Put another washer on. Basically sandwich the hose in between the two. And then put the banjo bolt into the caliper. Line up the hose. There we go. It's got that little hook that needs to line up with its slot. Thread it on all the way. The torque for this is 20 foot pounds. There we go. Use a 10 millimeter wrench, crack the bleeder screw open and we'll perform a gravity bleed. That means letting the uh, fluid fill up the caliper. Gravity is going to pull it through into this and then push all the air out. Once you start seeing a steady trickle of fluid come out, we can perform a full manual brake bleed. To begin your manual brake bleed, make sure that your brake master cylinder is topped off with clean fluid. Then you're going to want to have a second person in the car pumping up the brake pedal as you open and close the bleeder screw. So after a few pumps, have them hold pressure on the brake pedal and open up the bleeder screw. At this point, air and fluid will come out. Once the pedal has reached the floor, close off the bleeder screw and have them pump up the brakes again. After two to three pumps, have them hold pressure on the brake pedal once again and open up the bleeder screw. Repeat this procedure until no more air comes out of the caliper and you have only clean fluid. Once you get to that point, close off the bleeder screw and top off the master cylinder with clean fluid to make sure it's full. We have a steady trickle of brake fluid, so we'll tighten this up. There we go. Clean off any residual brake fluid that dripped, and don't forget to cap this off. Let's get the wheel back on. Make sure it's seated. Start on all five of your lug nuts, bottom them out in a cross pattern, and then also in a cross pattern, torque them to 85 foot-pounds. Eighty-five foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Double check them all.
Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.